Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I've just brushed the surface of Metallica, and each composition has been hugely varied while not dipping in excellence. I'm very excited to check out your most recommended next, The Unforgiven, which is often called a power ballad. I particularly love power ballads because they feature broad melodies and mad singing chops. So let's get to it. Up until that point, I wasn't persuaded that this might turn into a metal song. This is something that I feel Metallica has constantly been shaking my world with. They write songs that, to me, often feel more like film scores with metal elements rolled into them. I used to think that metal was just loud distortion, screaming. It's so much more than that. I've become such a fan of metal. But... Uh, the first 30 seconds of this, the acoustic nature felt like, a, again, a movie score, but definitely not metal. I would have said, oh, are we at a, a classical co concert? And then there's a, an electric guitar that came in and I went, hmm, maybe something else. <sighs> this reminds me also of that brilliant collaboration with the San Francisco Symphony. So cool. Okay, we're gonna go back to the beginning. Right, a horn? It's not what you expect. Tubular bells, acoustic guitar, all acoustic elements, and a snare, a snare drum. Could all could just be a symphony right now. Strings, and then we have electric guitar. I think there are castanets in there. Remember what I said about broad melodies often being featured in ballads? Immediately, you have a few different instruments joining in a melody. I'm hoping that this comes back. Ideally, I'd really love for it to come back as a sung melody, but they might just bring it back as an instrumental melody. I think they've defined it so clearly at this moment that it has to come back at some time. Go back to what I started. Oh, now I hear that echo of it first. Ah! Oh. Interesting. I took a motif and developed it. It is surprising, even though I know James Hetfield's voice a little bit now. I can't say that I fully know it. I've only seen a few of their videos. It strikes me as so aggressive still. There's just this signature aggression in his sound. And it also strikes me as so angular in the way that he approaches different pitches. It doesn't have this legato, almost slidey nature between the notes as much. It is very 
one pitch to the next here. Uh, I think that that actually partly enhances the aggression I hear. I Some of you might have heard uh, some Led Zeppelin analysis, and I talk about Robert Plant's voice. Often he has, he does like slinky things, real slide. Um, he'll, he has a lot more pitch bendy nature. And James Hetfield is the, the opposite. It's boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it's just it's such a surprise when he comes in i think that they totally intended that too partly have accented it in addition by bringing in lots of heavy symbols at that point in the drum kit Okay, so I said he's got angular stuff and he's mostly very angular. There is one little side in there. The in. Right there, on the in. <laughs> there was also a really interesting extra shadow vowel he added. This go race. Go race. <laughs> Right, it's just grace. Go race. It gives so much more harshness to the G when he does that. I'm always thinking about, okay, if a singer does a certain thing to the diction, a lot of things are done unconsciously, but especially with professional singers at a very high caliber, they tend to be very intentional about their choices. Sometimes there are things that they've worked on throughout the years and they've become a part of an unintentional habit that they've designed but was intentional a long time ago and how they might enunciate or express a certain thing. So I think, okay, go race. Why did he do that? Maybe it was to bring more harshness or directness to the G. Not sure, but it's interesting to notice. Whipping Boy's got amazing expression. Oh man, I want to go back to whipping. The way he attacks the consonants in there sounds like a whip. Wow, yeah, that whipping. He's really, he's overdoing it so much to create that sound of whipping. That, again, was unexpected. Metallica shakes my expectations. It really does. Um, the, the sound got so much cleaner and softer here. When James Hetfield entered, the vocals had a lot of distortion, uh, tons of directness, tons of punch in them. And then there was a softness that happened in this section. I, enough that I was going to pause and, and talk about something else. I've forgotten at this point what I was going to talk about because I was just really taken aback by suddenly a like a hush to the tone and a cleaner edge, the distortion disappearing. What? What? Okay, I'm going to go back here one more time. <sighs> So 
So all up until this point, we've had that extreme aggression. And I think a lot of that is presented in the sustaining of the same punchy sound the whole time. You have that, uh, it's lots of consonants. It is constant distortion, uh, a very constant louder dynamic. And you also have the ends are carried through to the very end and then grabbed off. There's not any tapering there. Uh, again, uh, the sort of more vertical approach to the line as well. All very aggressive. And then a bridge, not the soft part yet. First time, sorry. like fluffy. I didn't think that James Hetfield would sound fluffy. <laughs> it's a fluffy bunny, right? Like where, where did that come from? <laughs> wow. Um, huh. There was one little tiny catch of distortion as it shifted. <laughs> On, uh, uh, it has like a little, uh, catch at the end that sounds like it was bringing just a tiny bit of distortion from before. And it just sounds really human to me, the way it, like, it feels like it's starting to break just a little bit. There's so much going on, and I think this is a chorus here. First thing is, the lyrics are just really beautiful. They have drawn me in. I, I feel like there's a yearning in them to be something better. Right. There's just, it's somehow, while being metal, which I feel like can often be thought of as a very extreme extroverted thing, expression, uh, I feel like this is a very much internalized moment, still metal, that is just soul searching, right? There's a, a tenderness to it um, and the feeling that even within this really aggressive voice, there's such depth of emotion and in the way that a person might speak to themselves or even speak to a small child, there's like a certain uh, calmingness, calming quality here. <sighs> wow. And then you get different lines in here that have been expressed with a lot more angst. Um, <sighs> just there's so much, so much happening. There's a lot of different emotional depth in this. Oh, that's the bridge again. Such a gorgeous melody. I love the way that that has more um, point at that moment. It's it's so it's inner, and then there's these surges of emotion that that emerge in the vocal line. <sighs> Wow. Okay. I'm going to keep going after this. I just, I feel like I could take this chorus alone and spend hours just analyzing all of the tiny pieces because it feels like a little, a gym already. Never free, never <laughs> so the wow.
again, I find the aggression in all kinds of it, but I'm just listening to the way he's coming off of the ends of phrases. He bites them off. Sometimes he almost like roughs off of the end of a note. It's, he's not just attacking the beginning of the phrase. He's also attacking the end of the phrase. It almost sounds a little Simon and Garfunkel-ish in the very into harmony there. It has that light, airy quality to it. Similar note choice. <sighs> I think it's really important to also realize that in many instances here, he's hooking into the sound pretty strongly. What is an example? And at the same time, he isn't engaging distortion. Some singers will end up having more distortion just because they're singing louder. They engage it as well. It's like they've equivocated the dynamic with the texture and uh, they should be separate things that you can engage. It can be difficult to separate your voice like that, but uh, obviously James is able to do that. Never shine doing what I've shown. Never free, never me. So I don't the unforgivable. So pretty. so gorgeous. This this first part of this instrumental solo, I, I think that that was just the first part. I think we're going to get a different, uh, a different person playing now, probably. Uh, but this was just pretty. It almost sounds jazzy in the way it's composed. Back here? There's a, right? It sounds like jazzy it almost has like a impressionistic feel at the same time <sighs> mm -hmm. love the meter there and the way the triplets against it da, 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 da. <laughs> I just I wouldn't have expected this kind of sound in Metallica again Breaking so many expectations. I would venture to say that one of their goals was to draw us in with the contrast. This has happened multiple times now where we've had a lighter feel and then suddenly more aggressive, lighter than more aggressive, lighter than more aggressive. Uh, I don't know what that says within the context of the piece, maybe how that might support the lyrics and the text and the story. It's very deep. I feel like there's lots of different ways you can interpret that, but I'm seeing it, hearing it 
over and over and over. So I think that is one of their goals with this song. <laughs> oh again. It has a roll it's too it's cool. So the thing I really liked about that instrumental solo was a way that a lot of the rhythms were chosen to go against the already established rhythm underneath. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit. So this is fairly square. It definitely has a ba, 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 ba. It would probably have a four on the bottom of the time signature because it feels more like a duplicate. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So in that run, you had well, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So that played with that idea of how do I make this not as square in the room? And then right here, instead of ba 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 da da ba da da ba da da ba da da, this happens in I want to be in America. It happens um, a lot of times in Bernstein or Sondheim things where they'll play with just where the accent is or where the higher note is within a string of pitches. And it gives us the feeling that it's going against the rhythm underneath, even though it does perfectly align. I love that fading oh, It's such a good transition. I feel like you could listen to that chorus over and over and over. It has so many intriguing qualities about it. I've already talked about the fluffy nature of it, the difference in tones at various times. Uh, every time I'm listening to it, I hear how different lyrics are popping out to me. I think the lyrics are gorgeous. <sighs> Never shine through what, in what I've shown. It's just, yeah, it's a feeling of wanting to be more. Oh man, it pulls at me. It pulls at me in in some like just perfect way. Like about not living up to potential, I think. Wow. Cool. I it's so cool how they have these harmonies that are often fairly wide. I love the resolution out into the parallel octave back there. That was beautiful, but it it almost feels like there's an emptiness in this because of the way that things resolve out because of the way that some of the harmonies are further apart and i think that that's totally intended they've written emptiness into this composition without having necessarily empty horizontal space they have empty vertical space between pitches Wow! 
Okay, I feel like this is about not being kept in a box because of this whole labeling idea. Maybe it's about not being kept in a box or the maybe it's about somebody who has been kept in a box and wishes they could get out. <sighs> I want to know about your interpretations of this in the comments below. I think there are tons, tons of possibilities and that's the mark of a great song. I label you so I don't be Maybe we can, are we fading? We might be fading already. I just have to say this increase in emotion right here, the swelling at the end makes me think that being kept in a box idea is the right idea. It feels like he's fighting to get out. Larry is really pretty good. Oh, what a good fade too. That makes so much sense. I love that this ended with a fade. It feels like the person may have faded away, that they wanted to be so much more, but it wasn't possible and they were frustrated by being held back in some way. Uh, but this is just my interpretation in the moment. There may be so many more, and I love that. And I love the way that Metallica is shredding my expectations left and right. It's delightful getting to know more of their music. Thank you so much for guiding me in this experience. If you want to see more analysis of Metallica, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.